what's going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to talk about the HTTP protocol we will lay down the basics so first before talking about the IR structure and example requests and responses the methods and the codes status codes we will start by defining what is the HTTP protocol so by definition the HTTP protocol is the protocol by which or whereby the browser communicate with the web server that's how you receive data like HTML pages, images, and videos. Now, there is another version which is more commonly used than HTTP. It is the HTTPS, where you will add or where you add S at the very end of the word. The S stands for secure. Okay. Now, HTTPS recently has become more standard and more common than the HTTP protocol since the adoption of the secure browsing. So most of the time, most of the time when you browse websites, you will see HTTPS. Most of the websites now use HTTPS. And now it has become a ranking signal or ranking factor in Google to have a HTTPS website or a website that uses the HTTPS protocol. Okay, now, so, now now we defined the HTTP and we talked about HTTPS. Let's now understand the URL structure. Now the URL actually is the, the, the thing that or by which your browser requests pages on the web server. That's how web server understands your uh, browser request by using a URL. So let's dissect the different URL parts. So at the very first, we have the protocol. So here we have the protocol. Next, as you can see, www.domain.com. Here we have the domain itself, which website I am uh, communicating with. It could be also an IP address. Sometimes you notice some observers do not use domain names. They use uh, straight out IP addresses. So this one could be IP address. Next, we have the page itself. Here we are viewing the page product the product page and lastly you may see this when you encounter a, an e-commerce website so this one called the parameter and what is the value of the parameter so by saying uh, do, by putting this in the browser we're saying we want to browse the domain.com specifically I want the product okay whose ID equal to one that's very brief explanation of the URL structure. Now that we have explained the URL structure, let's now jump to the examples of HTTP request and response. So let's make some uh, frame here. Okay, so first let's start with the request. So when we send a request to a web server, say we are browsing to uh, domain.com and by the way i'm using try hack me as an example in the request headers in the request and the responses so first when we send a request at the very first of the request we have the method this is the method in this case it's get we're going to talk about the history methods in a while but first it starts with the method of the request method of the request next as you can see the browser tells the web server what http protocol we're using is it HTTPS or HTTP and what version it is? So in this case, it's HTTP 1.1. Next, here comes the host. And by the way, host, user agent, preferred are called <coughs> the HTTP headers. So these, we call them HTTP headers. Now, HTTP headers may differ from, from request to request, but in general, uh, they are the same. So as you can see, we have the host. Here we're turning the web server. We want to browse the Try Hack Me website. Next, we have the user agent header. The user agent, we're turning the web server. What is a browser we're using? Okay. And what is the version of it? And these are useful information for the web server to decide what kind of data encoding and what kind of um, technology to send back. Some browsers support certain technologies, some browsers don't support certain technologies. So now we have the referrer. 
the referrer will telling the web server on the other end that hosts tryhackme.com we're telling the web server that which page has referred us to tryhackme.com meaning that which page we clicked on that landed us in tryhackme.com in this case it is HTTPS tryhackme.com now that is the HTTP request now when we send this through the URL the response comes this way this is the response and this is an example response by the way it changes according to the request and according to the website so when we talk about the response first we have the again the version and we have the status code 200 status code means the web page uh, the uh, object the web page has been returned successfully so i am requesting as you can see here the main page slash and if i receive 200 okay it means the page has been returned successfully now here the next line these also are called HTTP headers by the way headers so next we have the server it is nginx 1.15.8 this is information about the web server including the software and the version <laughs> next we have the date header the current date time and the time zone of the web server next we have the content type the content type is actually a header that tells the client which is us the browser what sort of information what kind of information are being sent to us in this case when we requested the main page of tryhackme.com the kind of data to the type of data that has been returned in this page is html or text html next we have the content length the content length tells me or tells the client or tells the browser how long is the response okay this way we can confirm that there is no data corruption while the request has been sent or uh, while the uh, exchange has been done between the request and the response and don't forget that after a, after if every request and every response we have a blank line you can consider there's a black line here and a blank line here that indicates the end of the response or the end of the request okay so we talked about example of uh, hey HTTP request and example of hey HTTP response let's not now talk about the HTTP methods so methods now or status course yeah that's our methods so HTTP methods are four or most commonly we use four the first one is get now get is used to retrieve pages from the web server we are retrieving information in this case when we use uh, get slash we are requesting to access the main page on the website try hack me next we have post so the post request is the kind of request the browser uses when we are sending information to the web server such as submitting login information submitting a form submitting a comment we use post request uh, let me delete these Next we have the put request. So put request is similar to post, uh, but the catch is put request only used to update information rather than change information or create a new information. So here we are creating new data. Okay, here we are putting, I mean, we are updating, we are updating existing data. Lastly, we have the delete request. The delete request is a request that's used to delete information from web server such as deleting your name deleting your email deleting a comment we use a delete request now all of these we do not use uh, we do not need to specify these while we are browsing it's enough to put the url and your web browser takes care of the rest but if you want to understand the underlying or the inner workings of it this is how it works okay now let's talk about the status codes now status codes are found on the internet you can just browse them there are many cheat sheets on the HTTP status codes but let's talk about the most common ones first we have the 200 the 200 okay is used to indicate that the request our request here has been uh, completed 
and handled successfully it is actually used when we request a web page okay and the web page is sent back to us successfully the status code in this case is 200 okay now we have another one called 301 301 is the redirect when we request a web page such as try hack me and we end up on a different website just such as let's say hack the box so we request a try hack me and you ended up in hack the box this means that in the request headers the http response uh, the http request was uh, the status code was 301 also we have the 404 404 indicates that the page not found it is not found on the server it's either has been deleted or um, has been uh, hidden with us but it, it's not on the server you cannot view it now that's very different from the forbidden so there is a code status code called 403 this one is forbidden we call it forbidden so when we access a page okay and in the response you get 403 forbidden you're not allowed to access this page this means that the page itself has permissions that do not allow the public to access it and of course you can see the other uh, status codes on cheat sheets now let's talk about something else let's talk about the cookies now sometimes when we request a web page the response comes back with a header a new header or an additional header you may see set cookie header set cookie right so set cookie header is a type of header that you would see first in the http response and it tells the the, the, the it tells your computer to store a value or a cookie value that's how cookie that's, that's how cookies are set so let's let's say for example when you log into a website you send a request to log in slash log in right okay now after you have logged in the response will be sent back from the browser or from the web server to redirect you to your profile page now this very response contains a header called set cookie a set cookie is used to store information on your computer specifically your web browser to identify your request in the future this header contains your cookies so the cookie is a small piece of information used by the web server to identify your request in the future so you don't need to log in every time right the web server knows who you are so next time you open the page you don't need to log in one more time you are just redirected to the uh, profile page or whatever page you're requesting with your status being logged in that's so that's because when you first logged in the web server sent a header called set cookie that stored the cookie information on your web server to identify your request in the future or to um, memorize who you are okay now cookies can be removed from the uh, client or the browser you can remove cookies so that the web server will not recognize you anymore which means when you want to log in one more time you won't be automatically logged in you will be uh, presented with the login form because the web, ser web server or the yeah the web server doesn't recognize you anymore cookies can be accessed uh, using the browser developer tools let's look and let's take an example let me drop drag this here so inspect we go to application and we see here on the left pane we have cookies and we have the several websites which actually stored cookies on my web browser we have try hack me and here we can take a look at the cookie names so it is this one this is the cookie connect with sid is the cookie name and this is the value now cookies need to be secured and need not to be plain text if the cookie is plain text or contains information that identify you and define your username it can be used to hijack your session that's why the secure method of using cookies is to make it arbitrary random and if possible encoded or encrypted so that was for today guys i hope you understand i hope you found this uh, informative and before i say see you in the next video let me show you here the 
simulations on this room. So HTTP status codes, if you use the site, you can explore the different status codes. For example, 403, forbidden. That's you receive this when you don't have permission to access the page. 404, you receive this when you requested a page that doesn't exist or doesn't exist on the web server or it actually it actually has been deleted and it's not there anymore 504 it means that the web server is actually undergoing some maintenance or there is some problem that prevented the web server from responding with a proper request now this the next simulation is about the cookies yeah we saw the cookies this one about the status codes fine this is HTTPS, it's very easy. Making a request. If you take a look at this simulation here, you can see what happens when you uh, send a request using the browser with the various methods and the parameters that are being used. For example, here I can specify the get request. Here I specify the page and the settings. You can specify the key ID and the parameter value. You can explore this on your own it's very easy and you can get the answers for this rooms task so now i'm gonna say see you in the next video